Mice. And I'm Jordan. And welcome to another hot edition of Ice with Jordan. And have a look at what we've got coming up for you this, this week. week. Yahoo! Over the past few episodes, we've seen a lot of trick parts that'll make your car look wild. And we've shown you just how easy it can be done. We followed two budding boy racers to the garage to get their cars modified. Check this out. Hi, my name's Chris. This is my 12-month-old Citroen Saxo VTS. I think it's about time now that we find out what a car like this can do. So I brought it down here to the specialist. Me and my mate Dan are going to see if we can get it a bit quicker down the straight line, a bit nippy through those corners. Let's see. Hey, I've got a Citroen Saxo VTS, which okay. I was hoping to do some modifications on. Right. I certainly want to lower it, but I'd yep. uh, like to make it a bit quicker as well. No really problem. What you can do for me. Yep, of course. You say you want to lower it, definitely lower it, 35mm. Yeah, yeah. uh, lower the torsion bar as well at the back. Uh, that'll give you a lot better handling. Excellent. Uh, get a nice performance exhaust on there. Um, and also induction kit as well. What sort of thing, what sort of thing is that going to do for me? Well, the induction kit is just going to get more air into the engine, um, so you get more performance that way. And the exhaust is going to get, obviously, the exhaust gas out a lot quicker. Again, getting more performance. Excellent, that's what we want. Okay. If you want to come through, I'll show you exactly what they do. Great, thanks. Okay. Right, there we go, that's your rear back box. That's the three inch round tailpipe there, all stainless steel. That looks good to me. So, full system on there, that'll give you more power. Okay. Uh, also, we've got the induction kit there, induction filter. That'll remove all your, your air box. That'll allow a lot more air into the engine, get more power again out that way. Excellent, that's you what we want. Work well with the exhaust. And again, not a lot to look at, but there's the springs. That will lower the car, 35 mil. That's got me happy to break for those corners. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> Fit all right in the day. We could, we've got the lads on it right away for you. That's great. Okay. Okay, so what's that little lot come to? Well, we spent about 250 on the exhaust, about 100 or so on the springs, and another 60 or so on the induction kit. The springs make it look good. Let's see if it goes as well.
and made me choices and I tell you what, it was worth every penny. It's time for Ice on Ice and we saved the best for last. This awesome red compact BMW and here to talk about it is Irving. Irving, how are you? Hi, pleased to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Tell us about your system here. Well, back here we've got the amplifiers. We have four of these kilowatt amplifiers mm -hmm. and one of them's actually hidden under all this red Alcantara. And we've got two four channel 400 watt amplifiers. Mm -hmm. The larger amplifiers power the subwoofers. Okay. The smaller amplifiers actually power the mid-range and higher frequencies. And on I the see top, you got some LCDs here. What are, what's the LCD yeah. for? On the top here we've got uh, two screens which attach to the video and also to the Dreamcast which is in the centre console. So you can just hang out, drink some beers and watch some movies out here in the parking lot or something? Yeah, whatever you like, yeah. Oh, gotta dig it. And I guess you got your speakers here for the sound out here. When you... Yeah, they've got a couple of coax speakers. One the, thing uh, I notice is it's very bulky here and it looks like it weighs an awful lot. You have yeah. to do anything to the suspension or anything? Yeah, we put a, a, a severe amount of weight in the back here. Mm -hmm. um, the original suspension just couldn't cope with it, so we've had to upgrade the uh, springs. The first springs we tried weren't quite there, um, but these springs, touch wood, um, these can handle the load, yeah. Yeah? So you, uh, what do you think the, uh, the weight of the whole system here is? I wouldn't like to guess. Four um, people? Probably equal to about four people? Four large people, yeah. Right, right. That's quite a bit for a compact, yeah. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Well, it certainly is exciting. I can't wait to hear it. Let's have a look on the inside. Good deal. All right, Irvin. Wow, massive, huh? Yeah, in this dome here, we've got four kilowatt subs. Mm -hmm. We've got two face in, two face out. What's the significance of that? Uh, it just looks pretty and... This is a... <laughs> just looks good, huh? <laughs> yeah, it just gives us a chance to show off the, uh, the nice magnet. Good reason. Um, but it works the same, huh? The, the yeah. The sounds oh, yeah. the same whether it's, it's, it's normal or, or backwards, huh? Yeah, well these are coming through a ported box. Oh, okay. We've got four ports, four three-inch ports. Basically uh, a woofer just moves the air no matter if it's turned this way or that way. Yeah, exactly. Nice, nice. Very nice. And what do you have down here on the floor? Well, when we're not actually using these subs, we like to listen to some music at an ordinary volume. Classical, yeah. right? Yeah. Ordinary volume, okay. So we've got um, a couple of 8-inch woofers to provide some uh, fairly tight, punchy bass. Mm -hmm. And in the back here, we've got a couple of two-way speakers. Mm -hmm. And in the doors, we've got uh, some separates. Right, and what's, uh, what's this here? That's a games console, so when we're at the beach or at a show, we can actually uh, mm -hmm. take time out and play some uh, some computer games. Nice. So, Irvin, how many TVs you got in the whole thing? Well, we've got eight TV screens all together. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, one where the glove box used to be, one in the roof, and two on the back of the seat headrests, and two in the sides, and then two in the boot. One thing I notice here is that you got them in the headrest, but you have no back seat. Yeah. So it's got to be for a show, huh? Yeah, exactly. That's the reason. I, exactly, I picked yeah. up on that. All right. It's to fill in the little bit of space that you may have while people are looking at the uh, sort of box. Show the people how you can install certain things. Yeah. Right, right. Well, one thing I noticed is it's a bit cramped in here. I feel like I'm in an airplane cockpit or something with all these gadgets and knobs and everything. I, I tell you, it'd probably take me a year to learn everything in here. What's the significance? Yeah, basically you've lost uh, quite a lot of headroom uh, mm -hmm. because we've built this the uh, top of the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now about three inches thick. The why, roof. Would you, why would you build that out? It's to stop it from flexing. Uh, this is a competition curve. We actually enter it in mm -hmm. SPL or sound pressure level competitions. Sure, sure. So we try to stop the cabin area from expanding as much as possible. So basically we've got a stereo on wheels here. It's just, uh, just a massive rolling stereo. So explain to me all the, uh, the gadgets here and everything. Right, we've got um, a head unit, a rock Fosgate head unit. Mm -hmm. Basically, it plays the CDs. Um, when we're not in competition, obviously, it plays your favourite uh, tracks. Mm -hmm. but when you're in competition, obviously, it just plays a single sine wave frequency, mm -hmm. which gets sent through the subwoofers. And there's something I've never seen. What is this? This is what's called an ERDAT. Um, basically, it controls all the signal tweaks, um, so you get the right frequencies sent to the right type of speaker. So it's a digital um, EQX sort of, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. It's a, crossover. It, yeah, it's an EQ crossover. Um, basically, it's a mini computer. Okay, here comes the big, big question. How much? The cost. Everybody wants to know the cost. What's it cost, Urban? Um, well, I've, I've basically spent my kind of life savings on it. Oh, yeah. 
I couldn't I couldn't put an actual figure on it. It's just in excess of um, 25,000. Probably more in the system than the car, you think, or? Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah. Somewhere like that. Wow. Yeah, I just lose count of it. So you could have had two cars for the price of this one, huh? Yeah, but the uh, the stereo in the other car might not be as good. <laughs> I can imagine that. <laughs> I doubt that. Wow. Irvin, thank you very much. It's okay. It's a pleasure. There you have it. Another ice on ice. Awesome. This is the time for Jordan's strip. This is John with his Citroen Saxo. Now, before we find out a bit about the car, he's going to take it around the strip and show us what he can do. <laughs> Wow, what a performance that car did. Now then, John, I'll have to be a bit nosy. How okay. old are you? I'm 23. And what do you do? I'm an IT manager. I see. Yes. So, as we know, you've got Citroen Saxo. What have you added to it? Um, well, I've got some new wheels for a start, uh, and then I've added some Very nice. new seats as well. Are they like the bucket seats? They, they call are. them bucket yeah, seats? Yeah, bucket seats. And are they comfortable? Very comfortable. Oh. Yeah. What else? The exhaust, did you say? Yeah, I've changed the exhaust at the back. Um, it's a new system all the way through. And obviously, uh, a fair bit of uh, stereo kit as well. Yeah, how much do you think you've spent? Oh, I would hate to think. Um, probably in the region of about three grand. Blimey. Yeah, I know. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the brake horsepower? Uh, it's about 135 now. It's really? Not, the, the standard ones are about 90, so it's, uh, it's got a fair oh, bit of torque now. Pretty good. Yeah. So, um, have you ever got up to anything naughty in the car? Yeah, yeah, but I don't think my girlfriend won't be talking about that. <laughs> I guess it's a bit private there. Yeah. You sure you don't want to tell us? No, no, it's alright. Ah, oh, so how long have you been intending to keep the car? Uh, I've got it uh, probably for three years. I've had it for a year now. Yeah. So another couple of years. So you're not then, bored of it yet then? No, no, there's plenty of stuff still yet to do. Yeah. yeah. What do you think you're going to add to it next? Um, probably uh, do the interior. And maybe do the back seats. Maybe like them. Different them colour or all no, colour coded? Same colour. Same colour. Yeah? Match the front. Ah, oh, well, I can't wait to see, you know, when you finish that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to ask, John, what would you prefer? A week with the Ferrari or a week with me? Or a night with me? Oh, a night with you two will be all right. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we should do that then, shouldn't we? Oh, we'll be here. See you later. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> don't think you're going from a night No, now. I don't think so. <laughs> all that, and we're still only halfway through the show, but there's loads more to come after the breaks. So stay tuned. It's now time for our weekly sermon, so pull over, put the parking brake on, hit neutral, get out, and save your soul, because it's time for Reverend Bob. Cheers, Vanilla. How are you, viewers? It's me again, Reverend Bob, the priest unleashed. And that Vanilla Ice, top bloke, here we go. He taught me that in an evening. I'm going to be break dancing like the best of them at the end. Anyway, cut to the business. Today's show, a bit of a treat for you. You're going to take you behind the scenes of the television world, just to show you how it's made. Show you a bit about the cars, all the rest of it. So come on, let's have a wander around the corridors of power. Here we are, viewers. All right, this is where we do the recording of, uh, of Reverend Bob, just practicing for the news at the minute. Here's my man Bev, director. How are you, mate? Here we are, then, viewers. The basement of TV land. This is where all the stars hang out. The dressing rooms. Hey, it's Tony, me, uh, me agent. He sorts out all my deals. I'm not sure about TFI Friday. You know what I mean? Have you seen the ratings lately? And I'll definitely get back to you about the two weeks yep, in September the best to cover Johnny for the big breakfast, yeah? Sharp as a tail. Lovely. Sweet. I'll catch you next week, yeah? Okay, okay darling, bye. Hey, Bobby, yeah? Hey. And you're doing Parkinson, Clive Anderson and big breakfast as well, yeah? Magic. Yeah? Tell him you're doing a good job, man. All right, just leave it to me, yeah? Monday. Monday. You the man. Monday, Appreciate it. All right. Good luck, Bob. Top fella in, top fella. Like I said, I've met all the stars down here. Uh, Mark, Curry, 
Jimmy Cricket, he was a nice fella, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, Carl How Bass. How are you doing? All right, mate, how's How it going? Are you, what are you, man? Yeah, what are you filming? What, we're filming? Just doing a behind the scenes with Evan and Bob. Oh, Some nice people one, Evan. Yeah, and I've stuff. not seen you for pure time. No, where haven't you been down to church, man? Uh, well, you know what I mean? It's All like right, dead busy, busy now, yeah. like football. Hey, check this, viewers. What's your first passion in life? Uh, well, city. All right, Carl, what's your second? Um, second? Come on. Um, city reserves. All right, all right, what if I taught you, man? What if I, what if I preach? What's your third passion in life? Um, oh, uh, cars. Cars car, and, and, and... Cars and the church. Hey, good man. Yeah, nice see. one, man. You listened, yeah. Proper reverend, just man. Just football before that, and I'll be honest, I've yeah. even watched a few City games since. It was, wasn't it? Hey, nice you, one, reverend. you plenty of work, man? Yeah, man, on the radio and everything. Right. Nice church, one, mate. Sunday. All right, see ya. Be there, all nice right. Nice one, yeah. Later. Pure. It's Fred Solbert. All right, Fred. Fred. Father. How are you, mate? Father, it is raining outside. You all right? No, I'm not. What's up, mate? I said it was going to be sunny. It's raining. Ah, oh, don't worry about that. How are you anyway, man? It's good well, to see you. Not so bad, but it, it's raining. It should be sunny. Ah, oh, don't worry. I'll tell you what. If you want to come round the old uh, confession at the weekend, we'll sort it out. How's that? For a pint, as usual. Absolutely. You know well, the word, yeah, mate. Only confession you know for a, for a oh, hand pump inside, isn't it? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. <laughs> it's made all me right. feel better already, hey, Father. Don't worry about it. Yeah, good to thank see you, mate. Thank you. Take it easy. It's all but it's a legend. All right. Fantastic. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm buzzing down here, but the place I really want to be, the car park. All right, viewers, so here we are then, yeah? Staff car park. Now, before I started here, you know what media types are like? Rusty old Volkswagens, tatty old Fiestas. No style about them, no pride in what they drive. So we got one of the rooms in here. They had a couple of big sermons for the staff. They're all at it now. Almira GTI. New Volkswagen, not modified, but still tasty. This baby here, yeah, 18 inch. So there you have it, viewers, behind the scenes of Reverend Bob. Now, before I do my last sermon, I know you're all thinking, Reverend, what do you drive? You've been harping on all month about fancy cars. Check that out, yeah? Good old uh, Scooby, Subaru Impreza, I love it a bit. So with that as a nice backdrop, time for my sermon from the good book. Here we go. Clock, children, Reverend, call them what you will as you walk into the land of modified cars. Do not fear the price of alloy wheels. Do not worry about the cost of lowering suspension, for it is cool. All right, hopefully you've seen the light by now, the light of the Reverend Bob. It's been a wicked series, all right? I'm off for a, a bit of a blast round in my motor. Thanks for watching and take it easy. Go. Is that it? Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot, lads. Cheers, it's been great. Thanks for lending us the car and not a word about that, all right. And uh, yeah, I might see you around sometime, just off, uh, off the parish. Later. If you ever wonder how to take a regular hatchback car and turn it into a Ferrari beating supercar, we take you to Peugeot Ecos in Scotland for our special report. Check it out. This is a Peugeot 306 Cabriolet. Um, it came as a 2 litre XSI 8 valve engine, which was just not going to do the, do the business at all. Um, so when we bought the car, we actually bought it in intent to put a bigger engine in it. But of course, we were trying to put a really big engine in, which is the 24 valve 3 litre V6, which at the time we really didn't know if it would fit, but we'd give it a good go. So um, here it is, we changed the colour, done the interior, uh, big brakes, big wheels, fancy exhaust, uh, but the thing that's really important about this car is definitely the engine. The problem we had with these, actually fitting this engine was we had to manufacture engine mounts and manufacture drive shafts from scratch. Um, the wiring was a, a, a complete nightmare, but uh, we did get it in there and of course we've uh, done a lot of crazy conversions in our time, so this was just another one. Cops are known throughout Europe for their modifying prowess. And Matt's car proved what a mind can conceive, a cost can achieve.
Fuel 6 is our most up-to-date project at present. Um, that originally started as a diesel Fuel 6, believe it or not. And what we've done is we, we, within a few days of having it, we had the engine out of it. And we, we always had in mind to try the engine from the 306 GTI 6 in it. Um, that's the 167 brake um, version. Um, and it was really a case of try it and see if it would fit. We've recently put a full body kit on it as well. Um, we've lowered it, put a set of wheels on it, we've actually converted the wheels so that the, the, the five studs accepted on the car because there was a particular type of wheel that we liked but we couldn't find the fitment for it. Um, and, and really I think it has totally transformed people's you know, idea of the 206. <laughs>